In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. With your spirit. My dear friends, on this most sacred night in which our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, the Church calls upon her children scattered throughout the world to come together to watch and to pray. In keeping the memorial of the Lord's Paschal Solemnity in this way, listening to his word, and celebrating his mysteries, then we have the sure hope of, his, of sharing in his triumph over death and living with him in God. So let us pray. O oh God, who through your Son bestowed upon the faithful the fire of your glory, sanctify this new fire, we pray, and grant that, by these paschal celebrations, we may be so inflamed with heavenly desires, that with minds made pure, we may, we may obtain the festivities of an ending splendor, through Christ our Lord. Christ, yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, all ages belong to him, and all, all time belongs to him, and all the ages, to him be glory and power through every age and forever. Amen. By his holy and glorious wounds, may Christ the Lord always guard us. And protect us. Amen. May the light of Christ, rising in glory, dispel the darkness of our hearts and our minds. Christ our light. Christ our light.
Christ our light. Exalt, let them exalt the horse of heaven. Exalt, let angel ministers of God exalt. Let the trumpet of salvation sound aloud our mighty King's triumph. Be glad, let earth be glad, as glory floods her, ablaze with light from her eternal King. Let all corners of the earth be glad, knowing an end to gloom and darkness. Rejoice, let Mother Church also rejoice, arrayed with the lightning of his glory. Let this holy building shake with joy, filled with the mighty voices of the peoples. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, with ardent love of mind and heart, and with devoted service of our voice to acclaim our God invisible, the Almighty Father, and Jesus Christ, our Lord, his Son, his only begotten, who for our sake paid Adam's debt to the eternal Father, and pouring out his own dear blood, wiped clean the record of our ancient sinfulness. These then are the feasts of Passover, in which is slain the Lamb, the one true Lamb, whose blood anoints the doorposts of believers. This is the night when once you led our forebears, Israel's children, from slavery in Egypt and made them pass dry shod through the Red Sea. This is the night that with a pillar of fire banished the darkness of sin. This is the night that even now throughout the world sets Christian believers apart from worldly vices and from the gloom of sin, leading them to grace and joining them to his holy ones. This is the night 
when Christ broke the prison bars of death and rose victorious from the underworld. Our birth would have been no gain had we not been redeemed. O oh, wonder of your humble care for us, O oh, love, O oh, charity, beyond all telling, to ransom a slave you gave away your son. O oh, truly necessary sin of Adam, destroyed completely by the death of Christ. O oh, oh, happy fault that earned so great, so glorious a Redeemer. O oh, 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 truly blessed night, worthy alone to know the time and hour when Christ rose from the underworld. This is the night of which it is written, the night shall be as bright as day, dazzling is the night for me and full of gladness. The sanctifying power of this night dispels wickedness, washes faults away, restores innocence to the fallen, and joy to mourners, drives out hatred, fosters concord, and brings down the mighty. On this, your night of grace, O Holy Father, Accept this candle, a solemn offering, the work of bees and of your servants' hands, an evening sacrifice of praise, this gift from your most holy church. But now we know the praises of this pillar, which glowing fire ignites for God's honor, a fire into many flames divided, yet never dimmed by sharing of its light, for it is fed by melting wax, drawn out by mother bees to build a torch so precious. O oh, truly blessed night, when things of heaven are wed to those of earth and divine to the human. Therefore, O oh Lord, we pray you that this candle, hallowed to the honor of your name, may persevere undimmed to overcome the darkness of this night. Receive it as a pleasing fragrance, and let it mingle with the lights of heaven. May this flame be found still burning by the morning star, the one morning star who never sets, Christ your Son, who coming back from death's domain has shed his peaceful light on humanity and lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. My dear friends, I invite you to extinguish your candles at this time. And now that we've begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the word of God. Let us meditate on how God in times past saved his people. And in these, our last days, has sent his Son as our Redeemer. Let us pray that God may be complete in this Paschal work by salvation, by the fullness of redemption. Please be seated.
A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless wasteland and darkness covered the abyss, while a mighty wind swept over the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw how good the light was. God then separated the light from the darkness that God called the light day and the darkness he called night. Thus evening came and morning followed the first day. Then God said, let there be a dome in the middle of the waters to separate one body of water from the other. And so it happened. God made the dome and it separated the water above the dome from the water below it. God called the dome the sky. Evening came and morning followed the second day. Let the water under the sky be gathered into a single basin so that the dry land may appear. And so it happened. The water under the sky was gathered into its basin and the dry land appeared. God called the dry land the earth and the basin of the water he called the sea. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let the earth bring forth vegetation, every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. And so it happened. The earth brought forth every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. God saw how good it was. Evening came, and morning followed, the third day. Evening came, and morning came, the third day. And God saw that it was good, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate day from night. Let them mark the fixed times, the days and the years, and serve as luminaries in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth. And so it happened. God made the two great lights the greater one to govern the day, and the lesser one to govern the night. And he made the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth to govern the night and the day, and to separate the light from the darkness. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed the fourth day. Let the water team 
with an abundance of living creatures. And on the earth, let birds fly beneath the dome of the sky. And so it happened. God created the great sea monsters and all kinds of swimming creatures with which the water teems and all kinds of winged birds. God saw how good it was, and God blessed them, saying, Be fertile, multiply and fill the water of the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. Evening came, and morning followed, the fifth day. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth all kinds of living creatures, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of all kinds. And so it happened. God made all kinds of wild animals, all kinds of cattle, all kinds of creeping things of the earth. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle, and over all the wild animals and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image, in the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, saying, Be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all the living things that move on the earth. God also said, See, I give you every seed-bearing all plant all over the earth, and every tree that has seed-bearing fruit on it to be your food. And to all the animals of the land, all the birds of the air, all the living creatures that crawl on the ground, I give all the green plants for food. And so it happened. God looked at everything he had made, and he found it very good. Evening came, and morning followed the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth and all their array were completed, since on the seventh day God was finished with the work he had been doing. He rested on the seventh day from all the work he had undertaken. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Turn to their 
works pleasing to him will be my theme i will be glad in the Almighty, ever-living God, who are wonderful in the ordering of all your works, may those you have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the beginning, except that, at the end of the ages, Christ our Passover, who has been sacrificed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham. Here I am, he replied. <clears throat> then God said, take your son Isaac, your only one whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. Early the next morning, Abraham saddled his donkey took with him his son Isaac and two of his servants as well, and with the wood that he had cut for the Holocaust, set out for the place of which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham got sight of the place from afar. Then he said to his servants, both of you stay here with the donkey while the boy and I go on over yonder. We will worship and then come back to you. Thereupon Abraham took the wood for the Holocaust and laid it on his son Isaac's back, while he, he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two walked on together, Isaac spoke to his father Abraham. Father, Isaac said. Yes, son, he replied. Isaac continued, here are the fire and the wood, but where is the sheep for the Holocaust? Son, Abraham answered, God himself will provide the sheep for the Holocaust. Then the two continued going forward. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Next, he tied up his son Isaac and put him on top of the wood on the altar. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. So he went and took the ram and offered it up as a holocaust in place of his son. Abraham named the site Yahweh Yireh, hence people now say, on the mountain the Lord will see. Again, the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did in not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the sea. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies and in your descendants all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. The word of the Lord.
and fortune Never shall I look to other gods You shall be my one hope You are my inheritance, O Lord From of old you are my safety through the night you speak within my heart silently you teach me Let us pray. Let us pray. O God, Supreme Father of the faithful, who increased the children of your promise by pouring out the grace of adoption throughout the whole world, and who make the Paschal mystery, make your servant Abraham, father of nations, as once you swore, grant we pray, that your peoples may enter worthily into the grace which you call them, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Friends, we hear now from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward and you lift up your staff and with hand outstretched over the sea, split the sea in two that the Israelites may pass through it on dry land. But I will make the Egyptians so obstinate that they will go in after them then I will receive glory through Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and his charioteers. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I receive glory through Pharaoh and his chariots and his charioteers. The angel of God who had been leading Israel's camp now moved and went around behind them. A column of cloud also leaving the, leaving the front took up its place behind them so that it came between the camp of the Egyptians and that of Israel. But the cloud now became dark and thus the night passed without the rival camps coming any closer together all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and the Lord swept the sea with a strong east wind throughout the night. And so it turned to dry land. When the water was thus divided, the Israelites marched into the midst of the sea on dry land with water like a wall to their right and to their left. The Egyptians followed in pursuit. All Pharaoh's horses and chariots and charioteers went after them right into the midst of the sea. In the night watch, just before dawn, the Lord cast through the column of the fiery cloud upon the Egyptian force, a glance that threw them into a panic, and he so clogged their chariot wheels 
that they could hardly drive. With that, the Egyptians sounded the retreat before Israel because the Lord was fighting for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord told Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea that the water may flow back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and their charioteers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and at dawn the sea flowed back to its normal depth. The Egyptians were fleeing head on toward the sea when the Lord hurled them into its midst. As the water flowed back, it covered the chariots and the charioteers of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them escaped. But the Israelites had marched on dry land through the midst of the sea, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel on that day from the power of the Egyptians. When Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the seashore, and behold the great power that the Lord had shown against the Egyptians, they feared the Lord and believed in him and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is gloriously triumphant, horse and chariot he has cast into the sea. The word of the Lord. O God, whose ancient wonders remain undimmed in splendor even in our day, for what you once bestowed on a single people, freeing them from Pharaoh's persecution by the power of your right hand, now you bring about as salvation of the nations through the waters of rebirth. Grant, we pray, that the whole world may become children of Abraham and inherit the dignity of Israel's birthright through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.
the book of the prophet Isaiah. The one who has become your husband is your maker. His name is the Lord of hosts. Your redeemer is the Holy One of Israel, called God of all the earth. The Lord calls you back, like a wife forsaken and grieved in spirit, a wife married in youth and then cast off, says your God. For a brief moment, I abandoned you, but with great tenderness, I will take you back. In an outburst of wrath, for a moment, I hid my face from you. But with enduring love, I take pity on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. This is for me like the days of Noah, when I swore that the waters of Noah should never again deluge the earth. So I have sworn not to be angry with you or to rebuke you. Though the mountains leave their place and the hills be shaken, my love shall never leave you, nor my covenant of peace be shaken, says the Lord, who has mercy on you. O oh, afflicted one, storm-battered and unconsoled, I lay your pavements in carnelians and your foundations in sapphires. I will make your battlements of rubies, your gates of carbuncles, and all your walls of precious stones. All your children shall be taught by the Lord, and great shall be the peace of your children. In justice shall you be established, far from the fear of oppression, where destruction cannot come near you. The word of the Lord.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, surpass for the honor of your name what you pledged to the patriarchs by reason of their faith, and through sacred adoption increase the children of your promise, so that what the saints of old never doubted would come to pass, your church may now see in great part fulfilled through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, all you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come receive grain and eat. Come without paying and without cost, drink wine, and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread, your wages for what fails to satisfy? Heed me, and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully, listen, that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. As I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and a commander of nations, so shall you summon a nation you knew not, and nations that knew you not shall run to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, who has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way, and the wicked man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God who is generous and in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. For just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sole hope of the world, who by the preaching of your prophets unveiled the mysteries of this present age, graciously increase the longing of your people, for only at the prompting of your grace do the faithful progress in any kind of virtue. Through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of the prophet Baruch. Hear, O Israel, the commandments of life. Listen and know prudence. How is it, Israel, that you are in the land of your foes, grown old in a foreign land, defiled with the dead, accounted with those destined for the netherworld? You have forsaken the fountain of wisdom. Had you walked in the way of the God, you would have dwelt in enduring peace. Learn where prudence is, where strength, where understanding, that you may know also where are length of days and life, where light of the eyes and peace. Who has found the place of wisdom? Who has entered into her treasuries? The one who knows all things knows her. He has probed her by his knowledge, the one who established the earth for all time and filled it with four-footed beasts. He who dismisses the light and it departs, calls it, and it obeys him, trembling. Before whom the stars at their posts shine and rejoice. When he calls them, they answer, here we are, shining with joy for their maker. Such is our God. No other is to be compared to him. He has traced out the whole way of understanding and has given her to Jacob, his servant, to Israel, his beloved son. Since then, she has appeared on earth and moved among people. She is the book of the precepts of God, the law that endures forever. All who cling to her shall live, but those who die are those who forsake her. Turn, O Jacob, and receive her. Walk by her light toward splendor. Give not your glory to another, your privileges to an alien race. Blessed are we, O Israel, for what pleases God is known to us, the word of the Lord.
is the soul. The decrees of the Lord are steadfast. They give wisdom to the simple. mandatos del Señor son rectos y alegran el corazón. Son luz los preceptos del Señor, alumbrando el camino. Let us pray. O God, who constantly increase your church by your call to the nations, graciously grant to those you wash clean in the waters of baptism the assurance of your unfailing protection through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, when the house of Israel lived in their land, they defiled it with their conduct and deeds. Therefore I poured out my fury upon them, because of the blood they had poured out on the ground, and because they defiled it with idols. I scattered them among the nations, dispersing them over foreign lands. According to their conduct and deeds, I judged them. But when they came among the nations, wherever they came, they served to profane my holy name, because it was said of them, these are the people of the Lord, yet they had to leave their land. So I have relented because of my holy name, which the house of Israel profaned among the nations where they came. Therefore, say to the house of Israel, Thus says the Lord God, Not for your sakes do I act, house of Israel, but for the sake of my holy name, which you profaned among the nations which you came. I will prove the holiness of my great name, profaned among the nations, in whose midst you have profaned it. Thus the nations shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, when in their sight I prove my holiness through you. For I will take you away from among the nations, gather you from all the foreign lands, and bring you back to your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you, 
and cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols, I will cleanse you. I will give you a new heart and place a new spirit within you, taking from your bodies your stony hearts and giving you natural hearts. I will put my spirit within you and make you live by my statutes, careful to observe my decrees. You shall live in the land I gave your fathers. You shall be my people, and I will be your God. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. O God of unchanging power and eternal light, look with favor on the wondrous mystery of the whole church and serenely accomplish the work of human salvation which you planned from all eternity. May the whole world know and see that what was cast down is raised up 
who had become old is made new, and all things are restored to integrity through Christ, just as by him they came into being, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. God, who make this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church a spirit of adoption, so that renewed in mind and body, we may render you undivided service. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Jesus was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in a newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that our sinful body might be done away with 
that we might no longer be in slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as being dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to Matthew. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven, approached, rolled back the stone, and sat upon it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing was white as snow. The guards were shaken with fear of him and became like dead men. Then the angel said to the women in reply, Do not be afraid. I know that you are seeking Jesus the crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, 
He has been raised from the dead, and he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. Then they went away quickly from the tomb, fearful yet overjoyed, and ran to announce this to his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them on the way and greeted them. They approached, embraced his feet, and did him homage. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. This is wonderful news and so many great ways to respond to. And the great truth is that this is not an idea. This is not a story we tell. This is not a metaphor. This is truth. That Christ truly and bodily rose from the grave and his life was transformed. My friends in faith, this is important because this is God acting in and through history to bring us salvation, to show Christ is the first fruits of the resurrection that we share in. That just as St. Paul the Apostle reminds us in the, in the letter to the Romans, we share in his life through our baptism. We have died with him, and so truly we are raised with him. And so the life of Christ is active within us, that the Christ who is truly risen from the grave walks with us always and gives us that same life to walk about in our lives and to share that truth and to carry out what Christ said to the women, to go and tell the others, to share this news. My friends in faith, we share in this in a wonderful and beautiful way tonight with our candidates that they have come to know the presence of Christ in their life, knowing that they who have already been baptized desire life in the community of the Catholic Church. They desire to share in our community and in our life. And what a blessing to be able to see that because that is a reminder to us that God is with us, that God is giving us life, that we have shared and that they share with us. And so, my dear candidates, it's an honor and a privilege to celebrate your welcoming into the church this night. And in that, we see our own pattern as well, that reminder of the way that God so loves us, that God has desired us from the beginning and says, I want to be with you. I want to have ongoing and eternal relationship with you. And my friends in faith, we see that this is not an accident. God's desire to have that relationship with us. The fact that Christ is risen from the grave, none of this, not even creation itself, is an accident. Throughout our several readings tonight, we get this wonderful bird's eye view of salvation history. That from the beginning, God lovingly created the world, declaring that it is good. Doing this with great intention and great exactness loving all of creation into existence and not abandoning it either, but always walking with it. We hear in the way that he walks with Abraham and Sarah and their descendants, the way he walked with Moses and the Israelite people fleeing from Egypt, from the mouths of the prophets. We hear of the way that, that God is constantly with his people. And perhaps in a very beautiful way, we hear from Baruch that that sense of the stars themselves calling out to God, a reminder that all of creation is sustained by God. Again, that God did not create the world and walk away, but rather from the moment of creating it has always been with the world and has been with the people of the world, has been with us for the moments of our creation throughout our lives, desiring that relationship. And so we celebrate that. And all of this brings us together in the resurrection. Again, that Christ who is truly raised is active in all of our lives. That by the same power of the Holy Spirit that raised Christ from the dead is active in our lives. Is poured out upon us in our baptisms and our confirmations and gives us the strength to go forth to proclaim this good news. To go out shouting in the streets that alleluia, Christ is risen and to share that with others so that they too may know the love of God in their life. 
that they too may know that God desires relationship with them, so that all creation, that all peoples may be brought to God. Please remain seated. My dearly beloved, we humbly invoke, invoke upon this font the grace of God, the Almighty Father, that, who, that those who are born from it anew may be numbered among the children of the adoption in Christ. O God, who by invisible power accomplish a wonderful effect through the sacramental signs, and who in many ways have prepared water your creation to show forth the grace of baptism. O God, whose spirit in the first moments of the world's creation hovered over the waters, so that the very substance of water would even then take to itself the power to sanctify. O God, who by the outpouring of the flood foreshadowed regeneration, so that from the mystery of one and the same element of water would come an end to vice and a beginning of virtue. O God, who caused the children of Abraham to pass dry shod through the Red Sea, so that the chosen people, set free from slavery to Pharaoh, would prefigure the people of the baptized. O God, whose son, baptized by John in the waters of the Jordan, was anointed with the Holy Spirit, and as he hung upon the cross, gave forth water from his side, along with blood, and after his resurrection, commanded his disciples, go forth, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Look now, we pray, upon the face of your church, and graciously unseal for her the fountain of baptism. May this water receive by the Holy Spirit the grace of your only begotten Son, so that the human nature, created in your image and washed clean through the sacrament of baptism from all the squalor of the life of old, may be found worthy to rise to the life of newborn children through water and the Holy Spirit. May the power of the Holy Spirit, O Lord, we pray, come down through your Son into the fullness of this font, so that all who have been buried with Christ by baptism into death may rise again to life with him who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> Springs of water, bless the Lord. Give him glory and praise forever. Springs of water, bless the Lord. Give him glory and praise forever. of God, on this most joyous solemnity, the Church presents to you those who ask to be received into full communion within the Catholic Church. Adam Butzine.
Aliyah Zeli. Andrew Dana Miller. Andrew Heckman. Brock Merritt. Christopher Eisner. and Marcella Gunawan. And I invite you all to please stand with your candles as we relight them. Adam, Aaliyah, Andrew, Andrew, Brock, Christopher, and Marcella. It is with great joy that we welcome you tonight into the faith. And my dear friends, tonight, as they join us, we join them as well, that through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism, so we may rise with him in the newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew our promises of holy baptism, by which we once renounced Satan and all his works and promise to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask all of you, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? I do. Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? I do. Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by waters and the Holy Spirit and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus, our Lord, for eternal life. Amen. Amen. We are sprinkled with this water as a reminder of our baptisms.
Please extinguish your candles and be seated. Oh, not, not y'all. <laughs> Can you read that there? My dear candidates, of your own free will, you have asked to be received into full communion of the Catholic Church. You have made your decision after careful thought under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. You have renewed your baptismal commitment with us, and I now invite you, in the presence of this community, to profess the Catholic faith. In this faith, you will be one with us for the first time at the Eucharistic table of the Lord Jesus Christ, the sign of the Church's unity. And so I ask you, do you believe and profess all that the Catholic Church believes, teaches, and proclaims to be revealed by God? Good. My friends in faith, I invite you to extend your hands in prayer over our candidates. The Lord receives you into the Catholic Church. His loving kindness has led you here, so that in the unity of the Holy Spirit, you may have full communion with us in the faith that you have professed in the presence of his family. Amen. Amen. And now, my dear friends, now that you are Catholic, you are now candidates for confirmation. The oil of chrism has been blessed this past Tuesday and will be used this coming year for the baptism of infants, for confirmation, and the sacrament of holy orders. By your baptism, you have been, been born again in Christ, and you have become members of Christ and of his priestly people. Now you are to share in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit among us, the Spirit sent by the Lord upon his apostles at Pentecost, and given by them and their successors to be baptized. The promised strength of the Holy Spirit, which you are to receive, will make you more like Christ and help you to be witnesses to his suffering, death, and resurrection. It will strengthen you to be active members of the church and to build up the body of Christ in faith and love. And so, my dear friends, let us pray to God our Father, that he will pour out the Holy Spirit upon these candidates for confirmation and strengthen them with gifts and anoint them to be more like Christ, the Son of God.
all-powerful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by the water and the Holy Spirit, you freed your sons and daughters from sin and gave them new life. Send your Holy Spirit upon them to be their helper and guide. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of right judgment and courage, the spirit of knowledge and reverence. Fill them with the spirit of wonder and awe in your presence. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. My dear friends, let us stand and bring our prayers together with our new brothers and sisters in Christ, trusting in the Lord's resurrection active in our life, that he will hear all our prayers. Francis, Bishop-elect Earl Fernandez, and all leaders of the church, that they are always illuminated by the light of Christ's resurrection. We pray to the Lord. God of new life, hear our we pray in thanksgiving for those received into the church this night especially our brothers and sisters before us, that they may share with abundance the joy of Christian life. We pray to the Lord. God of new life, hear our prayer. For peace in Ukraine and an end to violence and war in our world, that Christ's peace may be known to all. We pray to the Lord for all students, faculty, and staff that the end of this semester may be a time of continued growth and learning. We pray to the Lord. For all the sick, suffering, and oppressed, that their needs may be cared for and that they are comforted. We pray to the Lord. For the repose of the souls of all those who have died, that they share in Christ's resurrection, we pray to the Lord. For all the prayers and the silence of our hearts,
we pray to the Lord. Loving God, on this day of resurrection, we rejoice in your triumph over sin and death. Hear our prayers we bring before you through the risen Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And my brothers and sisters, let us extend a hand of welcome to our new brothers and sisters in faith. Now, for the astute eyed among you, you may have seen that there are nine names and faces on our sign out in the lobby, but only seven people here tonight. Well, one of them, uh, Cameron, is celebrating at his home parish, so we remember him in prayer. And unfortunately, Gianni was unable to join us tonight because of illness, but he will still be received into the faith next weekend. So we still remember Cameron and Gianni in prayer as well as these seven. And with that, I say, the Lord be with you. The peace of the risen Lord be with you all. Let us offer each other, one another, a sign of Christ's peace.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. Accept, we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings, that what has begun in the Paschal Mysteries may, by the working of your power, bring us to healing of eternity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Lift them up, Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this night above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. <laughs> rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, 
his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit, in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, and advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom we have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. <clears throat> to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. I now invite the Eucharistic ministers to please come forward and gather by the font.
My friends in faith, tonight we will honor our new Catholic brothers and sisters by serving them Holy Communion first, and then followed by the ministers of Holy Communion, and then the whole assembly will share in this Eucharist. And to our new brothers and sisters, you join for us for the first time at the Eucharistic Banquet of the Lord. We have longed for this moment to be united at the table as the body of Christ, and we are filled with joy. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say a word and my soul shall be.
Let us pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this paschal sacrament one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Before we go our separate ways this night, I just want to first of all say again, congratulations to all of you who are received into full communion with us. We are privileged to have you as our brothers and sisters. And secondly, words of thanks to all those who make tonight possible. First and foremost, most especially to our RCAA team, especially the director, Kelly Solinger, for all of their hard work in helping guide these candidates into the church. So for the RCAA team and the sponsors, we all please stand for a moment. Thank you so much. And a big thank you to all of our musicians, our cantors, our singers, our psalmists, to all those who joined tonight to welcome people, who proclaim the scriptures, who served as ministers of communion, who served here at the altar this night, to everyone who worked behind the scenes from the art environment team and the mass coordinators, the whole Newman Center staff, my Paulus brothers, to the live stream ministries, to those of you joining us online, our faith community, most especially, thank you to you who are so passionate about offering a warm welcome to our brothers and sisters in Christ here. Thank you to all of you. So let us stand for our final blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads down and pray for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten Son endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Amen. Now that the day of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who have celebrated the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrating eternal joy. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia, alleluia.